Ibuprofen is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug derivative of propionic acid used for relieving pain, helping with fever and reducing inflammation. It is an optically active compound with both S and R isomers, of which the S isomer is the more biologically active, this isomer has also been isolated and used medically. It was originally synthesized and first patented in 1961, by the research arm of Boots Company led by Dr. Stuart Adams and marketed as Brufen. Nowadays ibuprofen is available under a variety of trade names around the world, with the most notable being Advil, Mutrin and Nurofen. Its discovery was the result of a long research program during the 1950s and 1960s that was looking for a superior alternative to aspirin, in terms of its safety. It was later marketed, in 1966, as a prescription drug in the United Kingdom, then the United States in 1974. Later in 1983 it became the first NSAID to be available over the counter in the UK and in the US in 1984. Like other NSAIDs it works by inhibiting the synthesis of prostaglandins, which are fat-like molecules that are derived from the omega-6 fatty acid, arachidonic acid, which are involved in mediating inflammation, pain and fever. It achieves this effect on prostaglandin synthesis by inhibiting cyclooxygenase, an enzyme that is present in various tissues of the body. Compared to other NSAIDs its potential for causing serious side effects like stomach ulcers, heart attacks or strokes is believed to be significantly less, although its effectiveness in relieving inflammation and pain is also believed to be less than that of other NSAIDs. It is on the World Health Organization's list of essential medicines, a list of the most important medication needed in a basic health system. Medical uses, ibuprofen is used primarily for fever, mild moderate pain, painful periods and inflammatory diseases such as osteoarthritis, juvenile idiopathic arthritis, dental pain, headache, migraine and rheumatoid arthritis. It is also used for pericarditis and patent ductus arteriosus. Ibuprofen lysine, in Europe, Australia, and New Zealand, ibuprofen lysine is licensed for treatment of the same conditions as ibuprofen. The lysine salt increases water solubility, allowing intravenous use, and is indicated for closure of a patent ductus arteriosus in premature infants weighing between 500 and 1,500 grams, who are no more than 32 weeks gestational age when usual medical management is ineffective. With regard to this indication, ibuprofen lysine is an effective alternative to intravenous indomethacine, and may be advantageous in terms of kidney function. Ibuprofen lysine has been shown to have a more rapid onset of action compared to acid ibuprofen. In UK ibuprofen lysine is marketed as express pain relief, tension headache relief and more commonly migraine relief medicine. Usually available in packing of 16 342 mg tablets the pack is marketed OTC by most superstores and pharmacies as their own branded product including, but not limited to, Asda, Tesco and Superdrug. Adverse effects, common adverse effects include, nausea, dyspepsia, gastrointestinal ulceration bleeding, raised liver enzymes, diarrhea, constipation, nosebleed, headache, dizziness rash, salt and fluid retention, and hypertension. A study from 2010 has shown regular use of NSAIDs was associated with an increase in hearing loss. Infrequent adverse effects include, esophageal ulceration, heart failure, hyperkalemia, renal impairment, confusion, and bronchospasm. Ibuprofen can exacerbate asthma, sometimes fatally. Ibuprofen may be quantitated in blood, plasma, or serum to demonstrate the presence of the drug in a person having experienced an anaphylactic reaction, confirm a diagnosis of poisoning in hospitalized patients, or assist in a medical legal death investigation. A nomogram relating ibuprofen plasma concentration, time since ingestion, and risk of developing renal toxicity in overdose patients has been published. Cardiovascular risk, along with several other NSAIDs. Chronic ibuprofen use has been found correlated with risk of hypertension and myocardial infarction, particularly among those chronically using high doses. In older hypertensive patients treated with hydrochloroatazide, 
ibuprofen at a high daily dose was found to significantly increase systolic blood pressure. Increased risk of kidney cancer, it has been recently discovered that regular use of NSAIDs, including ibuprofen, is associated with an increased risk of renal cell carcinoma, the most common type of kidney cancer. Skin, along with other NSAIDs, ibuprofen has been associated with the onset of bullous pemphigoid or pemphigoid-like blistering. As with other NSAIDs, ibuprofen has been reported to be a photosensitizing agent, but it is considered a weak photosensitizing agent compared to other members of the 2 aryl propionic acid class. Like other NSAIDs, ibuprofen is an extremely rare cause of the autoimmune disease Stevens-Johnson syndrome. Interactions Drinking alcohol when taking ibuprofen may increase risk of stomach bleeding. According to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, ibuprofen can interfere with the antiplatelet effect of low-dose aspirin, potentially rendering aspirin less effective when used for cardioprotection and stroke prevention. Allowing sufficient time between doses of ibuprofen and immediate release aspirin can avoid this problem. The recommended elapsed time between a dose of ibuprofen and a dose of aspirin depends on which is taken first. It would be 30 minutes or more for ibuprofen taken after IR aspirin, and 8 hours or more for ibuprofen taken before IR aspirin. However, this timing cannot be recommended for enteric coated aspirin. But, if ibuprofen is taken only occasionally without the recommended timing, the reduction of the cardioprotection and stroke prevention of a daily aspirin regimen is minimal. Erectile dysfunction risk A 2005 study linked long term use of NSAIDs, including ibuprofen, with a 140% higher risk of erectile dysfunction. The study, conducted at Kaiser Permanente and published in the Journal of Urology, reported Regular non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug use is associated with erectile dysfunction beyond what would be expected due to age and other conditions. The director of research for Kaiser Permanente added, there are many proven benefits of non-steroidals in preventing heart disease and for other conditions. People shouldn't stop taking them based on this observational study. However, if a man is taking this class of drugs and has ED, it's worth a discussion with his doctor. Overdose, ibuprofen overdose has become common since it was licensed for OTC use. Many overdose experiences are reported in the medical literature, although the frequency of life-threatening complications from ibuprofen overdose is low. Human response in cases of overdose ranges from absence of symptoms to fatal outcome despite intensive care treatment. Most symptoms are in excess of the pharmacological action of ibuprofen, and include abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, drowsiness, dizziness, headache, tinnitus, and nystagmus. Rarely, more severe symptoms, such as gastrointestinal bleeding, seizures, metabolic acidosis, hyperkalaemia, hypotension, bradycardia, tachycardia, atrial fibrillation, coma, hepatic dysfunction, acute renal failure, cyanosis, respiratory depression, and cardiac arrest have been reported. The severity of symptoms varies with the ingested dose and the time elapsed. However, individual sensitivity also plays an important role. Generally, the symptoms observed with an overdose of ibuprofen are similar to the symptoms caused by overdoses of other NSAIDs. Correlation between severity of symptoms and measured ibuprofen plasma levels is weak. Toxic effects are unlikely at doses below 100 mg per kilogram but can be severe above 400 mg per kilogram. However, large doses do not indicate the clinical course is likely to be lethal. A precise lethal dose is difficult to determine, as it may vary with age, weight, and concomitant diseases of the individual person. Therapy is largely symptomatic. In cases presenting early, gastric decontamination is recommended. This is achieved using activated charcoal. Charcoal absorbs the drug before it can enter the systemic circulation. Gastric lavage is now rarely used, but can be considered if the amount ingested is potentially life threatening, and it can be performed within 60 minutes of ingestion. Emesis is not recommended. 
the majority of ibuprofen ingestions produce only mild effects and the management of overdose is straightforward. Standard measures to maintain normal urine output should be instituted and renal function monitored. Since ibuprofen has acidic properties and is also excreted in the urine, forced alkaline diuresis is theoretically beneficial. However, because ibuprofen is highly protein-bound in the blood, renal excretion of unchanged drug is minimal. Forced alkaline diuresis is, therefore, of limited benefit. Symptomatic therapy for hypertension, gastrointestinal bleeding, acidosis, and renal toxicity may be indicated. On occasion, close monitoring in an intensive care unit for several days is necessary. A patient who survives the acute intoxication usually experiences no late secolae. Miscarriage A Canadian study published in the Canadian Medical Association Journal of Thousands of Pregnant Women suggests those taking any type or amount of NSAIDs were 2.4 times more likely to miscarry than those not taking the drugs. However, an Israeli study following thousands of women found no increased risk of miscarriage in the group of mothers using NSAIDs. Rhabdomyolysis, in a study by eHealthMe, ibuprofen has been associated also with the development of rhabdomyolysis, especially in people with high blood cholesterol, hyperlipidemia, high blood pressure, and depression. Mechanism of action, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as ibuprofen work by inhibiting the enzyme cyclooxygenase, which converts arachidonic acid to prostaglandin H2. PGH2, in turn, is converted by other enzymes to several other prostaglandins and to thromboxin A2. Like aspirin and indomitacine, ibuprofen is a non-selective COX inhibitor, in that it inhibits two isoforms of cyclooxygenase, COX-1 and COX-2. The analgesic, antipyretic, and anti-inflammatory activity of NSAIDs appears to operate mainly through inhibition of COX-2 whereas inhibition of COX-1 would be responsible for unwanted effects on the gastrointestinal tract. However, the role of the individual COX isoforms in the analgesic, anti-inflammatory, and gastric damage effects of NSAIDs is uncertain and different compounds cause different degrees of analgesia and gastric damage. Physical and chemical properties, it is practically insoluble in water but very soluble in most organic solvents. Stereochemistry Ibuprofen is produced industrially as a racemate. The compound, like other two aryl propionate derivatives, does contain a chiral center in the I plus or minus position of the propionate moiety. So two enantiomers of ibuprofen occur, with the potential for different biological effects and metabolism for each enantiomer. Indeed, the plus ibuprofen was found to be the active form both in vitro and in vivo. It was logical, then, to consider the potential for improving the selectivity and potency of ibuprofen formulations by marketing ibuprofen as a single enantioma product. Further in vivo testing, however, revealed the existence of an isomerase, which converted ibuprofen to the active enantioma. Synthesis The synthesis of this compound is a popular case study in green chemistry. The original boot synthesis of ibuprofen consisted of six steps started with the friedel crafts acetylation of isobutyl benzene. Reaction with ethyl chloroacetate gave the I plus or minus, I squared epoxy ester, which was hydrolyzed and decarboxylated to the aldehyde. Reaction with hydroxylamine gave the oxime, which was converted to the nitrile, then hydrolyzed to the desired acid. An improved synthesis by BHC required only three steps. This improved synthesis won the Presidential Green Chemistry Challenge Greener Synthetic Pathways Award in 1997. After a similar acetylation, hydrogenation with rainy nickel gave the alcohol, which underwent palladium catalyzed carbonylation. An electrochemical carboxylation of a para isobutyl benzyl chloride to ibuprofen is promoted under supercritical carbon dioxide. History Ibuprofen was derived from propionic acid by the research arm of Boots Group during the 1960s. It was discovered by Andrew R. M. Dunlop, with colleagues Stuart Adams, John Nicholson, Vinlay Simmons, Jeff Wilson and Colin Burrows, and patented in 1961. The drug was launched as a treatment for rheumatoid arthritis in the United Kingdom in 1969, 
and in the United States in 1974. Adams initially tested his drug on a hangover. He was subsequently awarded an OBE in 1987. Boots was awarded the Queen's Award for Technical Achievement for the Development of the Drug in 1987. Availability Ibuprofen was made available under prescription in the United Kingdom in 1969, and in the United States in 1974. In the years since, the good tolerability profile, along with extensive experience in the population, as well as in so-called Phase IV trials, has resulted in the availability of ibuprofen OTC in pharmacies worldwide, as well as in supermarkets and other general retailers. North America, ibuprofen is commonly available in the United States up to the FDA's 1984 dose limit OTC, rarely used higher by prescription. In 2009, the first injectable formulation of ibuprofen was approved in the United States, under the trade name Caldola. Ibuprofen was the only parenteral for both pain and fever available in the country prior to the approval of Ophmav injection by the FDA. Research Ibuprofen is sometimes used for the treatment of acne, because of its anti inflammatory properties and has been sold in Japan in topical form for adult acne. As with other NSAIDs, ibuprofen may be useful in the treatment of severe orthostatic hypertension. In some studies, Ibuprofen showed superior results compared to a placebo in the prevention of Alzheimer's disease, when given in low doses over a long time. Ibuprofen has been associated with a lower risk of Parkinson's disease, and may delay or prevent it. Aspirin, other NSAIDs, and paracetamol had no effect on the risk for Parkinson's. In March 2011, Researchers at Harvard Medical School announced in neurology that ibuprofen had a neuroprotective effect against the risk of developing Parkinson's disease. People regularly consuming ibuprofen were reported to have a 38% lower risk of developing Parkinson's disease, but no such effect was found for other pain relievers, such as aspirin and paracetamol. Use of ibuprofen to lower the risk of Parkinson's disease in the general population would not be problem-free given the possibility of adverse effects on the urinary and digestive systems. References External links, U.S. National Library of Medicine, Medline Plus Drug Information, Ibuprofen, University of Bristol Chemistry Department page on Ibuprofen, U.S. National Library of Medicine, Drug Information Portal, Ibuprofen, Caldella Full Prescribing Information, Ibuprofen use in the treatment of RSD.